everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. I love to talk about fabrics and patterns and things that have been inspiring me in the sewing community. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then please do make sure you've hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. I try and bring out a weekly video on a Sunday where I share a recap of everything that I've done sewing wise that week and anything that's been inspiring me. And then I also bring out additional blogs throughout the week, um, mainly around fabric and pattern hauls, um, my makes videos. Um, I subscribe to Sew Hilly Jane's sewing box, so I do unboxing videos and um, sometimes I'll do sew alongs or tutorials. Um, so do make sure you hit that subscribe button if any of those sound interesting to you. So today's video is a makes video. So I'm going to be sharing all of the things that I got sewn up in the month of July. So July for me um, at work is quite a busy month because we're coming to the end of the academic school year. Um, so I've got all of my current class sort of winding down and getting all of their transition and handover things ready, reports, etc. Um, whilst also considering and thinking about all of the new children that are going to be joining us in the September. So it's a really busy month work-wise for me. And for that reason, I stuck with a lot of patterns that I've tried and tested. So patterns that I know fit me really well or um, I know that I really enjoy wearing. So a lot of the, my makes are patterns that I've used before. Um, I'll let you know what I'm wearing first before I dive in with my first make of July. So I am wearing a tried and tested pattern again and I am going to be sharing a version of this pattern um, later on in the video. But this is the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress, which is a faux wrap jersey dress. Um, and it's in this amazing fabric that I got from First Fabrics. I don't know if you can see, but it's got hungry caterpillars all over it. And it's got all of the fruit that the very hungry caterpillar ate in the story. And I've just done the knee length version and I'll pop pictures in of me wearing this so you can see what it looks like. Um, it's quite warm today in London, so I've got this on um, and I'm going to be wearing this to school as well. Um, I love it. It's just so fun. And I love the Westcliff dress because it's like secret pyjamas and it just fits me really nicely too. So that is what I'm wearing. So on to the first thing that I got sewn up and I'm going to pop all of these things on throughout the video just so you can see what they look like. Um, where possible, I've tried to iron all of the makes so that they're not too creased. Um, but there will still be some creases um, because I didn't want to spend hours and hours and hours ironing before I film this video. So on to the first thing that I got sewn up in the month of July. These aren't in any particular order. This is just the first thing that I'm going to talk about. Um, and it's one of my favourite jumpsuit patterns because it's like wearing secret pyjamas. It is the True Bias Nova jumpsuit. So I'm going to stop the video and just pop it on so you can see what it looks like. Um, if you've watched all my previous videos, I've already shared this in one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups. Um, but I used the most amazing tie-dye fabric that I got from Hey so Sister. So I'm just going to pop it on and then I can share the pattern with you. Okay, here is my Nova jumpsuit. So it's in this amazing tie-dye fabric that I got from Hey so Sister. So it's a cotton um, jersey fabric. And I have sewn the version that's got the waistband across here. It's got the pockets. Um, and then it has also got the elasticated cuff at the bottom too. Um, I absolutely love this jumpsuit. I love this fabric. I think it's gorgeous. Um, I love that it's got this scoop neckline at the front, but then it's also got the scoop neckline at the back. And it's also high enough that scoop so that you can still wear a bra. So it's bra friendly, which is great. And then the straps are quite wide, so you can't see your bra underneath either. So this is the pattern. It's by True Bias, and you can either make the jumpsuit or you can do the play suit. I'm yet to try the plate suit, play suit, but I actually really like the idea of that. Um, so you can either have this elasticated channel across the waist for the play suit and the jumpsuit, or you can just do this relaxed fit, and you can do that relaxed fit for the jumpsuit or the play suit as well. This comes in sizes, and they've got two size ranges. So they've got the 0 to 18, and then they've also got the size 14 to 30, which is great. So they have expanded the size range for this pattern. Um, it is designed for stretch fabrics. So I'm just going to find some information for you. Here are some line drawings. And you can see what the different variations look like. So you've got the jumpsuit or the play suit with the elasticated channel. And then you've got the jumpsuit or play suit where it's more of a relaxed fit. And both versions have got pockets in, which is amazing. 
Um, it's a knit jumpsuit with all the different variations that I've just talked to you through. Um, the fabric they suggest is light to medium weight knit fabrics with 20% or more stretch like a cotton interlock and t-shirt jersey. Less stable knits um, with a lot of stretch like rayon or bamboo should be used with caution because they could affect the fit. Um, so in terms of sizes, um, a size zero starts at a chest measurement 32 inches, waist measurement 26 inches and hip measurement 34 inches. And then for a size 30, it's a chest measurement, measurement 57 and a half inches, waist measurement 50 and a half inches and then hip measurement 59 and a half inches. So going off my measurements, I sewed up a size four, which is a chest measurement 34 inches, waist measurement 28 inches and hip measurement 36 inches and it fits me really nicely i'm really pleased with the fit across the bust there's no gaping or anything it fits me really nicely and sits quite flat um, and because i've got the elasticated channel across here it doesn't matter that my waist measurement was an inch smaller than the size that i went for and then i like having that room across my hip area too and then these are the pockets so the pockets are a really nice size which is great and then, um, like I said, I went for the version that's got the cuff on the bottom. Um, I am really interested in trying the play suit version with the relaxed fit, because I think that would be something nice for when the weather's really warm. Um, I love True Bias patterns. I think the instructions are great. So you've got some really clear um, images to help you along the way too, which is great. And this pattern is just the perfect throw on for the summer. Um, it's really comfortable to wear as well. I've worn this both to work, but I've also worn it. Um, we went to a festival, we went camping and it was perfect for camping. And I've just worn it when I'm, you know, out and about with my family as well. And it's perfect. I wore this for a trip. We went to the park actually, and it was the perfect thing to wear because it's really, really comfortable. It's got pockets so I could pop all the bits and bobs in my pockets that I needed to. Um, and there's enough room for you to be able to move comfortably as well. Um, so I absolutely adore the True Bias um, Nova jumpsuit and I've made quite a few versions which goes to show how much I love it and how comfortable it is. There's loads of amazing versions over on Instagram as well so if you search the um, hashtag Nova jumpsuit you'll be able to get lots and lots of inspiration. So I'm going to get changed into my second make and again this is something that I've shared in my Sunday sewing catch up. Um, but this is something that I made with school specifically in mind. So I'm just going to get changed into my next make. Okay, this is my next make. And I think out of everything I've made this month, apart from the dresses for my girls, it's probably one of my favourite things that I've made. Um, so this is the um, Tilling the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. Um, so it's this pattern here and it comes in, it's got a couple of different skirt options and sleeve options. So you have got an option to have long sleeves that um, you've got like an elasticated cuff on the bottom or you can have short sleeves, which is the version that I've gone for. And then you can either have the knee length skirt, which is just the gathered skirt, or you can do the midi length where it's got an extra tier on it. And you sew this skirt ever so slightly shorter than that one and then you add the tier on too. This is the version that I've gone for and that was mainly because of how much fabric I had. I didn't have enough to add to the tear. And actually I'm really glad that I've got a knee length skirt for this version because it makes it a bit more wearable for the summer. This fabric is an amazing Hungry Caterpillar print fabric and I just absolutely love it. The company that I got it from, they don't actually have any of it left in stock but they have got some other amazing Hungry Caterpillar cotton fabrics. So I will link them down below if you are interested in buying any Hungry Caterpillar fabric i appreciate it's probably quite niche um this is a book that we use at school um so i do read the hungry caterpillar book to my class and we do do a couple of weeks work on it so it's perfect for wearing to school and i even managed to find i don't know if you're going to be able to see um some caterpillar buttons which i absolutely adore and i've worn this a few times to school and the children absolutely loved it they loved it when they spotted that i actually had caterpillars on my dress um, so this is a pattern that is in their extended size range. So let me just find the sizes for you. So there's two size ranges within the Lyra shirt dress pattern. There's a UK 6 to 24 and then the second size band is a UK 16 to 34. So for a UK 6, it's a 30 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement and 33 inch hip measurement. And then for a UK 34, it's a 56 inch high bust. 60 inch bust measurement, 53 inch waist and 61 inch 
hip measurement. For my measurements, that puts me in a UK 10, so a 34 inch bust, 28 inch waist and a 37 inch hip. My hip is slightly smaller than that measurement, but it doesn't matter because it's got a lot of ease for that dress anyway, um, for the pattern. I mainly, for this pattern, go off my bust measurement because that's where it's fairly fitted across your bust. So if you are I mean, and ahhing about what size to go for, I would say go off your bust measurement first because you don't want it to be pulling across your bust and because of that placket, if it does start to pull, then you'll start to get gaping and I didn't want that at all. So I've sewed up the dress as per pattern instructions. It's got the two piece collar with the collar stand and then we've got the bottom placket that starts here. Um, but with all of my Lyra shirt dresses, I tend to have it a little bit open and then it stops sort of here. Um, so my waist is here and it stops just there. And then I've just got the knee length skirt version on. Um, and then I've done my usual where I've added the waist ties in at the side seam. And then I like to do that because you can see there's a lot of room in this dress. So I like to do that just to add a bit of shaping across my waist. And then I tend to just tie it at the front here, like so. This dress pattern has got pockets, which is amazing. And they're really deep pockets too. And if I stand up, you can see it stops just above my knee, um, which is perfect length really for the summer. Um, I love the Lyra shirt dress. I've sewn up lots of versions of this dress already. My preferred style of this dress is that full um, sort of midi length with the extra tier on the bottom. I'm yet to do the long sleeves. Um, I'm not a massive fan of long sleeves. I've talked about this before. I don't like um, having sleeves all the way down here. I tend to push them up anyway. So that's why I haven't sewn up that version yet. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics like a cotton lawn, a um, voile, seersucker, chambray, double gauze, viscose rayon, tensile lysol, and lighter weight needle cord. So I have got plans to make one for the autumn. I've got some needle cord in my stash and I'm really excited about having a go at making a Lyra shirt dress for the autumn with a slightly heavier fabric. This is a cotton poplin and I would say this is really nice for sewing up the Lyra because it means that you can get a really crisp collar and you can just make sure that all of the details within the shirt dress are really crisp. Cotton poplin presses really nicely and because it's a cotton fabric it's also really breathable too. Um, so I'm really delighted with this dress. Um, it's something really fun that I can wear to work but I'll also wear it you know when I'm not at work either and I really love those little cute details with the caterpillars and then I also put in the back a label a pink coat club label which says um, room for cake as well um, which is just a really cute little addition that I know is there nobody else gets to see it but I know that it's there because the hungry caterpillar does eat some cake he eats cake on the Saturday which is why I really wanted a room for cake label so I'm going to get changed into the next pattern that I've sewn up and I've sewn three versions of this pattern so I'll be back in a second. So here is one version of my next make and it is the new pattern by Tilly and the Buttons which is the sky dress. So it's a sundress pattern and it's got different skirt length options. Now I have written notes on the back of this just around the sizing so just excuse my scribble on the back of the pattern when I show you what the line drawings look like. Um, but these are the different variations. So you can do the maxi length, you can do the knee length, or you can do the midi length. And it's got this option for these faux ties on the sort of um, straps here. Now they're ties that you sew separately and then you tie them onto this part where your shoulder is. Um, and they're faux, so it means that they're not really attached to the dress. Um, I'm sewing up a version at the moment which is in a rainbow fabric. Um, and I have chosen to go with the little faux ties, but on my three versions that I'm gonna show you today, I haven't gone for that option. Instead, what I chose to do was use that pattern piece to insert some ties, some waist ties, just to give it a little bit of shaping. Um, and it just brings it in ever so slightly. You can see just by sitting down that there's so much room in this sundress, which is great, because it makes it perfect for throwing on in hot weather. Um, but I wanted to have the option to bring it in ever so slightly around sort of my empire bust that waistline um, and I just tie them at the back so they've got a little bow on the back which is another cute little feature so I'll show you that when I stand up. Um, so it's a new pattern by Tilly and the Buttons and it is a sundress um, and they describe it as a reach for throw on sundress on those sticky hot summer days when you don't really know what else to wear. You can also layer it up by popping a t-shirt on underneath or popping on a cardigan if it's a little bit cooler. 
and it's got an easy fitting empire waist bodice which is gently shaped with some pleats underneath just here I actually tried on my latest sky dress to see if I could not include the pleats but try and do some gathering but it just didn't work it looked really awful so I would say the pleats definitely add a little bit of shaping around there um, it's also got um, bias binding finish around the neckline and the armholes are finished with bias binding too however on one of my versions I wanted to see if I could hack the pattern to see if I could fully line the bodice and I found a video that explains the burrito method really clearly so I'll link that in the description if you are considering making this pattern but you don't want to use bias binding you want to fully line it instead it's a really great um i can't remember where it's from but it's a really great tutorial that's really clear so that'll be in the description below if you want to check that out and if you are um just wanting some um if you're looking for a really clear explanation on how to use the burrito method i would definitely recommend the video because it explains it really clearly um it's got a slightly square scoop neckline as you can see um, and it's designed to cover your bra and there's also a tutorial in here on how to do some little um, I think they're like um, what do they call it uh, bra strap stra stays where you use like poppers um, for added security there's optional faux ties to the straps for an extra, extra touch of whimsy and then there's also three different skirt options so you can choose mini knee or maxi length for floaty gathered skirt and it's also got inseam pockets for your ice cream money too which is great um i have seen three versions and it really is the perfect dress to chuck on when it's boiling hot or you don't want anything to be touching your body too much um in terms of sizes for a uk6 it's a bust measurement 30 inches waist measurement 24 inches and then hip measurement 33 inches um, and then for a uk34 it's a 56 inch high bust 60 inch bust 53 inch waist and a 61 inch hip measurement in terms of fabric suggestions they recommend light to medium weight fabrics like a cotton lawn poplin seersucker lighter weight linen and blends double gauze viscose rayon lyocell tensile silk or poly crepe jean so a huge range of fabrics that you can choose you get the wonderful um really clear instructions by tilly and the buttons as you would expect with really clear photos to hold your hand every step of the way they describe it as, some, as a um, pattern for confident beginners and I would definitely say there's not too many fitting issues with this pattern. Um, you haven't got any fiddly fastenings. I'd say the most fiddly aspect is that bias binding around the neckline. But if you stay stitch your neckline, really take your time, use lots and lots of pins or clips, um, then it's really quite straightforward actually to attach that bias. Um, one thing that I will say about this pattern, and I know that I'm not the only person to find this with this pattern, is um, the bias binding pattern piece. I found that they recommend that you cut four on the bias, but I found by doing that, I don't have enough bias binding to do the neckline here and the back and also the armholes. I've ended up having to cut out, I think I cut out double the amount that they recommend. So I think I did eight in the end and I had enough bias binding by doing that. So this is the pattern piece. It's just, I've just got my rainbow fabric that I'm making my next sky dress out of. With this one, I just ended up extending the pattern piece um, and I've cut out four. So I'm hoping that that's enough um, bias tape but I know Tamlin found the same by just using that pattern piece and only cutting out four it's not enough bias tape to bias bind the neck band uh, the neckline and the armholes so I would just say um I would cut out extra pieces just to make sure that you've got enough um so this is my first version in this gorgeous seersucker fabric which is a pigeon wishes fabric and I think I have managed to find it still in stock somewhere so I'll link it down below if you're interested in buying it it's this gorgeous pattern with um, like the pale pink um, sort of background and then the red splodges all over it. And then it's an empire bodice. So it stops just under my bust. And then I've got my waist ties and I tend to just tie them at the back and it just creates a really cute little bow detail. There, just like that. And it just helps to bring it in ever so slightly. Really roomy, which it's meant to be. And then I've got the lovely pockets which are nice and deep. And then I've gone for the knee length hemline. So my knees are there and it stops just at my knee. And I think that's a really comfortable length for me. I don't think I'd want to go any shorter. 
um, but that's just preference for me. So this is the first version. I'll put images in of all of these versions so you can see what they look like too. And I'm just going to get changed into the next version to show you. So this is my next version and this fabric I got from Semi Sunshine. It's like a really lovely retro print fabric um, and it's got quite a dramatic pattern on it. And I was really unsure about what to turn it into because I didn't want to distort that print that you've got on the fabric. And then the sky dress came out and I thought perfect pattern and fabric pairing. So I think I had about two and a half meters of this fabric. So I've gone for the maxi version of this dress. And I'm really glad that I saved this fabric for this pattern because it doesn't distort that beautiful print at all. It's a really lovely drapey fabric too, which is amazing. And then I've got the pockets in as usual. Um, and then I've done the little tie so I can pull it in at the back. And then this is the maxi version. Um, and I love that that print does not get distorted at all by the pattern piece. Because it's just one pattern piece for the front and then the same for the back. The maxi is really floaty and flowy. This is a, I think it's a viscose fabric. So it's really lovely and drapey and swishy. And then it's maxi. So I'll show you, it goes right down to my ankle, which is great. Now with this version, I did the bias binding around the neckline as well and the armholes. But the next version that I'm going to pop on in a second, um, I ended up um, lining the bodice using the tutorial that I talked about and it was a really straightforward tutorial. Um, I found this version because it's a viscose, a bit fiddly doing the bias tape. Um, with the other version, because it was a cotton seersucker, it's a bit more of a stable fabric. It, the bias tape pressed um, easier and it just gave a really lovely neat finish. This has still got a really nice neat finish. Um, but it was just slightly more fiddly. It still sits nice and flat across there and then the same for the back. Um, but I'm really pleased that I found the tutorial for how to fully line the bodice because I feel like it's just an easier finish um, and I really like that finish on the inside as well. I think it gives a really neat finish on the inside. Even though my bias tape gives a really neat finish on the inside too, um, I really like the version where I've managed to fully line the bodice. So I'm just going to pop that one on so you can see what that looks like too. So this is my final version and I've had this fabric in my stash for years. I think probably about four years from when I first started learning to sew. It's a Dashwood Studio print fabric, I think, and it's a rayon. So it's slightly weightier. Um, but this is the fully lined version. So I didn't do the bias tape around the neckline. It's completely fully lined and I really like that finish. It's really neat along here. Um, along the arms and it's really neat along the front and then also along the back. Um, I did everything else exactly the same as the pattern so apart from adding the waist ties which again I just fasten at the back and it just brings in ever so slightly that skirt and I think it just gives a really cute feature on the back as well with the little bow um, and then this is the knee length version so there are my knees and it stops just there and then I also added pockets. Um, and the only thing that I did differently was I fully lined the bodice. Um, so there is a video, as I keep saying, in the description on how to do that. Um, what you need to consider when you're ordering your fabric, if you want to fully line it, is that you would need to cut the front bodice on the fold twice and then the back bodice on the fold twice as well. If you don't quite have enough fabric, what I ended up having to do with this um, fabric because I didn't quite have enough to do the back bodice on the fold twice is I cut the second piece which was going to be the lining on the inside um, as two separate pieces but I added on a centimetre for my um, seam allowance and that just because it's on the inside you can't see the seam allowance so it doesn't matter and it also meant that I wasn't wasting too much fabric either so that's a little top tip if you don't think that you would have enough fabric to cut that pattern piece on the fold um, for the lining because it's not seen um, you could cut it as two separate pieces but make sure you include that um, seam allowance and then sew it up as normal so you end up with those two bodies pieces for the front and back um, that are one full piece um, and then follow the instructions in the video for how to fully line the sundress. Um, I'm pleased with all of my versions. I think my favourite is probably um, my sort of peachy one with the pinks and the oranges, um, which is the maxi length version, just because I really love that fabric. I think they're going to be great for throwing on when the weather's really warm outside as well. Um, and I'm going to be taking a couple of them with me on my holidays. So I'm going to get changed into the next 
thing that I got sewn up and I got two of these sewn up as well so I'll be back in a second. So I have got on my next thing that I got sewn up and it is a pattern from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. And it is the Tabitha t-shirt, which I'll get the pattern for you in a second. I got this gorgeous See You at Six sweatshirting fabric from Sew Me Sunshine. I bought this version and then I've got a lim lemon print version as well, which I'll pop on um, when I've shown you the pattern. Um, I only got half a metre because the See You at Six fabrics are really high quality, but that also means that they're quite expensive. So I wanted to see if I could have a play around with the fabric and see if I could eke out a t-shirt using just half a metre and then I've got some matching ribbing so I've used the ribbing for the neckline and then I've used the ribbing for the hem as well and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out so I've just got the ribbing for the neckline um, and then I've just added a hem band on the bottom of the t-shirt so here is my waist um, and then I've just got it on with the floor skirt with the patch pockets and then that's where that sits sort of here and the t-shirt without the band I think would have stopped about here and that would have just been ever so slightly too cropped for my liking. So by adding the band, it just means that it sits over the waistband of the skirt. And I just feel like that's a more comfortable um, sort of place for the T-shirt to finish. So I'm really pleased that I've been able to do that. So I'll just get the pattern for you. It's in the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Um, it's called the Tabitha T-shirt. So here's the model wearing it. And then I'll just get the line drawings. So it's quite a straightforward, quite loose fitting t-shirt. You've got a neck band pattern piece, which I've used the ribbing for. And then you've got the short sleeve option, which is what I've gone for. Or you've got the um, elbow length sleeve, and then you've got the full length sleeve. It comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. So for a UK 6, it's a 30 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement, and 33 inch hip measurement. And then for a UK 24, it's a 48 inch bust, 42 inch waist and a 51 inch hip measurement. In terms of fabric suggestions for this pattern, they recommend light to medium weight knit fabrics with at least 10% crosswise stretch, like a jersey, interlock, stretch velvet, lightweight French terry or sweater knit. And then you can use the ribbing for the neck band um, so that it can stretch over your head. Um, as you would expect with all of Tilly's patterns, even in the books, you get those lovely images to help you every step of the way, which is great. And then there's tips for your neckband as well and how to just make sure that it sits as flat as possible. Now, they recommend when you've put your um, neckband in, they do recommend that you top stitch it. I haven't with this neckband because it's a ribbing. So I've just left it as it is. I need to give it a press actually, but I've just left it. I haven't top stitched it. And it's the same for the hem band on the bottom. I didn't top stitch that in place either. Um, and I think it looks absolutely fine. And then I just top stitched the sleeves. Um, somebody recommended playing around with the ribbing for the sleeves too. Um, but at that point I'd already hemmed it. So I think I'll just leave it. But if I ever did a t-shirt like this again, I think I would do the ribbing for the neckline and the hem band and the cuffs. Um, and I just have to work out what size I want the cuffs to be. So this is my first version and it's going to go with so many things that I've got in my wardrobe, which I'm really pleased about. Um, the See You at Six sweatshirting is slightly thicker than like a cotton jersey. So this is definitely something that I think is going to be better for the sort of cooler months. Um, and maybe for the summer months when it starts to get a little bit cooler um, and definitely for the autumn as well and I could wear it in the winter just with a cardigan chucked on top too it's going to go with my skirts and culottes and definitely my pinafore dresses too so I'm just going to pop the other one on just so you can see what that one looks like so this is the next one now this is described as an orange print on their website but I know when Harriet shared this she said it's definitely not oranges it's definitely lemons um, and they're just really really cute um, same thing as the other t-shirt, I've got the neckband um, ribbing here, then I've done the same contrast ribbing on the bottom and it just adds just enough length I feel for this to go nicely with my skirts and culottes because I feel like without that it would have been, I feel like it would have been just a little bit too cropped for my liking um, but I feel like this goes really nicely as well and then I've got the ribbing all the way around the back. Um, in terms of the Tabitha t-shirt fit, it isn't meant to be sort of skin tight, you are meant to have a little bit of room and when I've gone um, off my measurements I've gone off the bust first to make sure that it's not too 
tight across the bust and make sure that it just feels comfortable and that I've got enough room for sort of movement and things. Um, but I'm really delighted that I managed to create two t-shirts using this gorgeous See You at Six fabric and just using half a metre as well. Um, and the See You at Six fabrics I think were quite wide as well which meant that I did have enough fabric to make a t-shirt. I just made it cropped and then I used the matching ribbing um, for the neck band and for the hem band as well just to add that extra length. So I feel like I've got two great t-shirts that are going to really add something to my wardrobe and they've just got some interesting detail about them because of those patterns um, and see you at Six Fabrics are always such great quality too. So I'm really pleased with these two t-shirts. So I'm going to pop on the next thing. What is the next thing that I got sewn up? Oh, the next thing is some Sophia trousers using the same book, actually. So I'm just going to pop those on so you can see what they look like. OK, the next thing that I've got sewn up is the Sophia trousers from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. I'll just stand up so you can see what they look like in this gorgeous fabric that I got from Hey So Sisters. This is a rayon fabric. It's really lovely and soft and um, it's really drapey, which is great for these trousers. Um, and I'm really pleased with how these turned out. I think they're great for the summer because they're really quite light, lightweight. Um, so I'll show you the pattern and then I'll stand up so you can see what the trousers look like. Um, but here is the pattern on the lovely Samantha. It's from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Um, in terms of cutting time, they say it's 20 minutes because it's only two pattern pieces. And then the sewing time is about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so with just two pattern pieces, no fiddly fastenings, it does make it quite a speedy sew. It's got a flat fronted waistband, which I really like. Um, but then it's got elastic in the back, which makes it really easy for fitting them. So you've got this flat fronted here and then you've got the elastic that you catch in the waistband and then it goes around the back and you get all these lovely gathers. Um, because it's in the Make It Simple book, it comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. So in terms of a UK 6, it's a waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a UK 24, it's a 42 inch waist and a 51 inch hip measurement. They recommend light to medium weight drapey fabrics like a lightweight linen, chambray, lyocell, viscose, rayon, tensile, crepe, plissé, stretch, velvet or viscose jersey. I didn't realise you could make them in a viscose jersey, actually. That's quite an interesting um, thing to learn. I think that would make them super comfortable because they're already really, really comfortable. And you get the usual step-by-step -step instructions with really clear photographic images to help you along the way, which is great. Um, I added an inch onto the length of these trousers because I wanted to make sure that they stopped at my ankle. So if I stand up and show you, so you've got the flat fronted waistband here, which makes them look really lovely. Um, and just neat and then you've got the pockets side seam pockets that you can add in and then you've got the elastic band around the back which creates a bit of gathering here um, and then this is what they look like on so that's the back and that's the front they're a little bit wide legged they're not you know really fitted on the leg and then I added an inch on the bottom just to make sure that they stop at my ankle this fabric's gorgeous it's from Hey So Sister and it's a really lovely quality and I'm really pleased with the fit of these trousers. I feel like they fit me really nicely and they're really comfortable because you've got that flat fronted waistband. They fit fairly sort of sit fairly flat across your tummy area as well. Um, and then that's what the back looks like as well. And with that elastic, you don't get too many gathers. So it's not like really bun bunched at the back either. Um, and then, yeah, there's uh, instructions in the book on how to add the inseam pockets because that pocket piece doesn't come with the pattern. So you don't trace that off. Um, I've made quite a few pairs of the dungarees um, and I've made a couple of pairs of the trousers now as well and they are really comfortable. Um, in terms of the size that I went for, if we go back to the size measurements, I went off my waist measurement which is a 27 inch waist so I made a UK 10 um, because it's 28 inch waist measurement, 37 inch hip measurement. I was a bit worried about there being too much room around my hip but actually I think that there's enough room for them to be comfortable. They don't look really oversized in that area at all. I haven't got too much fabric sort of bunched around this area either. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased. I've got a really lovely, comfortable pair of summer trousers um, and I've already worn them loads. I've worn them to work. Um, I've also worn them when I'm just around the house at home or I'm out and about with um, my girls as well. Super duper comfortable. I'm really glad that I put pockets in as well because pockets, I feel like all garments need to have pockets. 
So what else have I got left to share with you? Oh, I've got a skirt that I made. So I'm going to pop that on and I'll talk you through the skirt. And then I've just got um, a pattern to share with you that I sewed for my girls. And then I did a hack for myself. And then I've got another Westcliff dress. Okay, it looks like I haven't put anything different on, but that's because it's a skirt. So I'll stand up in a second. But I had some viscose linen fabric that I bought from Sewing Sunshine and I only got a metre of it. It might even have been a remnant. Um, and I wanted to turn it into a skirt and I was going to use the Made by Ray Clio skirt pattern because I've used that quite a few times. But I just couldn't get the pattern pieces to fit on the fabric. And then because I couldn't get the Clio skirt to work with the pattern pieces and the fabric, I then thought about making the Sophia trousers, which I've just shared the pattern. But I still couldn't get those pattern pieces to fit on the fabric. So in the end, to make sure that I could use all the scraps of the fabric, I just ended up making a really simple gathered skirt. Um, and it stops above my knee, which is a skirt length, which I don't normally go for. Um, it's perfect for the summer. It's really swishy. I was a little bit worried that it was too gathered, which meant that it looked a little bit bulky on me. So it'd be great to get your thoughts. Um, because I am considering unpicking the waistband and just taking out some of that width of fabric. So I do feel around my waist and hip area, it does look a little bit too bulky. Um, but I'll stand up so you can see. I didn't use a pattern for this skirt. I literally cut two rectangles um, and then um, stitched them together. Um, folded over the top of it for the waistband, put in some elastic and hey presto, I've got a skirt. Um, but I used every single scrap of the fabric, which is why I feel like it's a little bit too gathered because I used all of the fabric. Um, so there is a lot of gathering. So I'll stand up so you can see. Um, but yeah, there's quite a lot of gathering at the front there. And then you've got the same. It's a really full skirt, which means it's incredibly swishy, which is something that I love. Um, but I'm just wondering whether it's too um, sort of gathered. So yeah, it stops above my knee, which is not a pattern um, length, not a skirt length that I normally go for. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like at the back. And then that's what it looks like at the front. And then if you look at the sides, so here's my waist, you can see that there's a lot of gathering. But it'd be great to get your thoughts on what you think, whether you think that that looks okay or not. Um, I'm really pleased that I've managed to use this fabric. It's gorgeous. I love the pattern that's going on in the skirt. And I'm really pleased that I've managed to use all of the fabric because it frustrates me sometimes when I end up with tiny weeny little scraps of fabric left um, when I'm making garments. And sometimes you're left with such scrappy little bits that you can't actually turn them into anything else. So I save them so that I can make the closet core poof and then just put all of the fabric scraps in there. Um, but I'm always delighted when I can use every single piece, every single part of the fabric. Um, and I think this will be a really versatile skirt to wear in the summer when it's really warm. And I've just got it on today just with a ready to wear white t-shirt. And I think that that looks really nice. Now I could have the t-shirt slightly more sort of fitted. Um, so it looks less sort of um, oversized, I guess. I'm just a bit worried that I feel like there's a bit too much gathering here. So do I take out a little bit of the volume um, of the skirt or do I just go for it and enjoy the fact that it's a really voluminous skirt? It'd be great to get your thoughts on that one. Um, but that was the next thing that I got sewn up in July. So I'm going to get changed into my Westcliff dress next, I think. So then the other things that I've made are all using the same pattern. So I'll put my Westcliff dress on first and then I can show you what that looks like. Okay, here is my next make, and this is a pattern by Friday Pattern Company. Um, it is the Westcliff dress, which I absolutely adore. It's super comfortable, um, really quite easy to make as well. Um, fits me really nicely, and it is definitely secret pyjamas. And I use this gorgeous viscose jersey that I got from Rainbow Fabrics, which I absolutely love. It's got a green background, green's my favourite colour, and then all these flowers all over it, and I just think it's a really, really cute print perfect for the summer with this version i went for the full-on maxi length so it's got the faux wrap i've got a little um sort of belt made from waist ties and then i went for this skirt length as well uh with the extra tier on the bottom if i stand up you'll be able to see what it looks like and um, so i've got that extra ruffle on the bottom and then it stops just at my ankle 
Um, I had to take off, I think I cut off about two inches from that bottom ruffle because it was way too long. It was touching the floor. And in my June Makes vlog, I, had, I talked about doing the same thing. Um, I'm five foot five and a half, um, if that helps anyone when you're considering making this. But yeah, I had to take two inches off the bottom because otherwise it would have dragged on the floor. And I'm really pleased that I did that because it feels like it's a more wearable length. So this is a pattern by Friday Pattern Company. Um, it's an easy pattern for knit fabrics and it comes in sizes extra small to 4X. So for an extra small, it's a bust measurement 32 inches to 33 inches, waist measurement 24 to 25 inches and then hip measurement 34 to 35 inches. And then a 4X, it's a 53 to 54 inch bust measurement, 46 to 47 inch waist measurement and then 56 to 57 inch hip measurement. It's a stylish and comfortable knit dress that's got this faux wrap. So this wraps inside and then across here and you base that together before you attach the skirt. And then you've got the option for an A-line skirt and an optional gathered lower tier. So I have made the shorter version as well as making the maxi version. I think the maxi version is definitely my favorite style. Um, I just love that swishiness that you get from that extra gathered tier that's on the bottom. Um, and then it also includes a pattern piece to create the belt. But what I tend to do, so I've still got it fastened at the front, but I worry about losing a belt. So I've just got them sewn into the side seams and then I wrap it around like you would a belt and then I just tie it at the front like so. Um, I just worry that a belt would fall off or I worry that I would lose the belt. Um, it's a dress that's perfect for everyday wear, but it can be dressed up for any occasion. Um, I love the Friday Pattern Company instructions. They're always really, really clear. And lots of steps broken down and then some clear um, sort of drawings to help you along the way as well. And then inside the booklet, you've got the stretch guide as well. And then this pattern is perfect for knit fabrics of all kinds, but you need at least 25% stretch. So um, they recommend using the stretch guide that they've got in the booklet. If you choose a knit with more body like a ponty, it'll have a more structured look. But if you go for a drapier knit like a rayon jersey or a viscose jersey, then it gives it a more romantic look. Um, and then you've got the um, information about how much fabric you need. So I sewed this up. Uh, what was my sizing? I've gone for a size small because I've gone off my bust measurement, which is 34 inch bust. And then my waist measurement is 27 inches which puts me in the small and then my hips are 35 inch which puts me in the small measurement too um, and then in terms of how much fabric you need with the lower tier for a small it's in yards so it says um, if it's a narrow fabric you need three yards three and two thirds of a yard uh, and then if it's a wider fabric two and seven eighths of a yard oh and then they've got meters underneath sorry in terms of how much fabric you need, for my version, I used three metres of fabric um, from, fab from Rainbow Fabrics and that was enough to make the maxi version. Um, to make the knee length version, um, I think I've used two metres in the past and that's enough to make the dress without the lower tier. They suggest, yeah, 2.1 metres if it's a wide fabric without the lower tier and then 2.6 metres for the small. So I have managed to get it out of three metres. Um, and then two metres for the, the version that looks like this. Um, I love the Westcliff dress. I've made it so many times now. Um, it's really comfortable for wearing to work, but it's also really comfortable for um, wearing around the house. And it's perfect for dinner as well. Lots of room for food in my tummy. Um, and that's another thing why I like it, because I do bloat throughout the day. And there is a lot of room around my tummy area, making it really comfortable. It's really comfortable for sitting down in as well. Um, so I'm really pleased with this dress. I think it's going to be perfect for the summer and also whether, when the weather cools down but it's still sunny outside and then I've just gone for short sleeves. So I'm going to get changed into my final make and then I've got two things that I want to show you that I've made for my girls which I'll put images in of both of them wearing their dresses. So I'm back wearing the final thing that I got sewn up in July but I'm not going to talk about this dress yet because I've got something that I want to talk to you about that I got sewn up for my girls but also for a friend. So if you have followed me and you've watched all my previous vlogs you'll know that I had a friend that um, her daughter had requested a pig dress for her birthday and she knows that I sew and asked me if I would mind sewing up a dress for her daughter. So she'd managed to find some fabric online and it actually turned out to be spoonflower fabric. Now my friend doesn't sew and doesn't really know anything about fabric so 
which I didn't know it was spoon flower, but it's this mint coloured um, fabric. So it's got mint coloured background with hearts and swirls and clouds. And then it's got pigs that are flying. It's super cute. I've only got a scrap left. I used every other part of the fabric to make the dress. And she wanted a swishy maxi length party dress that she could wear in the summer. So I had to look in my stash and I knew that I had this pattern, which is the Simplicity 1121 pattern, um, which is this lovely maxi dress. And then there's also other variations. So you can do this one, which has got all the little tiny ruffles on the bottom, or you can do this version, which is the knee length with the ruffle. So I have sewn up this version for her. Um, I've got images of the dress as a flat lay, so I'll pop those in, but I don't have pictures of her wearing the dress. Um, and I wouldn't put pictures of her in the video anyway, because I don't have mum's permission. Um, this was a really enjoyable sew. I don't often sew with the big four patterns because I find their sizing can be off. This comes in sizes US 7, 8, 10, 12 and 14. And um, so up to age 14. And I've sewn it for my girls who are 11 and 12. And then I've sewn it for a friend's daughter who is 10. And then I've hacked the pattern to make an adult version too, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. So when I sewed up the version using the pig fabric, both of my girls loved the dress and both asked if I could make them a dress using fabric that I had in my stash. So I got all of my fabrics out and they had a rummage and they both chose a fabric very different to each other, um, but fabrics that I'd been keeping hold of and not really knowing what to turn these fabrics into. So it's great that they both loved these fabrics and I've now turned it into dresses for the both of them. So I went for this version, which is a maxi version. So it's got this bodice piece and then you've got a skirt that's sort of gathered and then you've got an extra ruffle on the bottom. Now the back of the dress is the most interesting feature for me. You're probably not gonna be able to see it, but the straps come up over the shoulder onto the back and then you've got this like back bodice piece which is gathered with elastic so you put an elastic channel two elastic channels in and then it's gathered into that and then you put a belt loop on and the ties come down the back and then you tie them into a bow on the back of the dress so I'll show you the fabrics that they both chose and um, so Ruby went for this version which has got this it's this beautiful viscose twill that I got from Sew Me Sunshine in this gorgeous almost like mint background um, and it's got all these like lines on that look like sprinkles. It's really beautiful. And then Lola chose this fabric that I'd originally bought thinking that I would make a shirt for my husband. But when it arrived, he wasn't keen on the fabric. Um, I love the fabric, but he wouldn't wear a shirt made in this fabric. And this is a viscose from Somi Sunshine. I think Harriet might still have some of this in. So if she has, I'll link it in the description. But it's gorgeous. Now the back of the dress is the most interesting feature for me. I think it's just beautiful. Um, so you create this back bodice piece and then you fold, so the bodice piece is actually that size and then you fold it in on itself in half and then you sew two channels and put elastic in. So you get this gorgeous like gatheredness, that's not even a word, this gorgeous gathered aspect of the fabric in the back. And then you've got this belt loop here um, I've sewed in a label that says Made by Mummy, which is a Rosy Cheeks label. I'll link in the description for you below. And then this is what the front bodice looks like. So you've got this bodice piece and then you've got the straps. And then the straps come over the shoulder and then you tie them into the back as like a um, bow. So you thread it through there and then you thread this one through the other side. Oops. And then you fasten it to create like a bow detail in the back. It's a really cute feature of the dress. Um, and I just absolutely love it. And then, yeah, I've done the gathered skirt. And then they both got the ruffle on the bottom. So that's the first one. And then this one was rubies. So again, you've got that lovely back detail that has got the elastic channel in the back that creates this gorgeous gathering. And um, she's got the same label in the back of her dress. And then yeah, the bodice folds in on itself, so it's almost like it's fully lined. And then you've got the belt loop, and then she's got the wide straps as well that come over the top, like that. And then you tie them through the belt loop, and then it creates a gorgeous little bow on the back. And then she's got the gorgeous skirt with the ruffle as well. So I'll put pictures in of them both wearing them, because they're both thrilled with their dresses. And they're just a perfect addition to their summer wardrobe.
And I'm really pleased that I managed to use that pattern, the simplicity pattern, because I've had that pattern in my stash for ages and just not sewn with it. Um, mainly because I've had bad experiences with um, big four patterns and their sizing. I find that their sizing tends to be off. But this fitted the girls really nicely. I think because it's got that elastic channel in the back, it meant that I could adjust that um, sort of the length of the elastic to make sure that it really fitted them. And because you adjust it with the ties on the back as well, it also meant that I could really make sure that it fitted them both really well. So inspired by this gorgeous dress and seeing how much my girls loved wearing theirs, I started to have a little think about how I could hack the pattern to create a dress version for myself. So I had a go at combining two fabrics that I had in my stash and I used the Tilly and the Button Sky Dress pattern, which I'll just grab. So I had to look at the patterns that I already had in my stash and I used some fabrics that I already had in my stash that I wasn't too worried about using and it not working out and I did a little bit of a twirl. And the reason I pulled the Sky Dress out is because I felt like the bodice was quite similar. Um, obviously with the sky dress they've got the straps and the bodice piece for the sky dress comes with the strap detail built in. The bodice piece for the simplicity dress, um, you attach the, you sort of sandwich the ties um, between the bodice. The front bodice is fully lined as well and you sandwich the straps um, there. And then with the simplicity pattern, um, it's not bra friendly. So where the straps come down the back, you can't really get away with wearing a bra unless you wear a strapless bra. I like to wear a bra, I like to feel really supported in the boob area. Um, so that was the first amendment that I made to the, to the pattern once I'd done the twirl. So this is my twirl version. Um, so I just had some Sean Bray for the bodice and then I had this fabric that I got from Fabric um, Fabricland and it's just a viscose, so it's really drapey and it moves in the way that I was hoping that my finished garment would move. So I did the bodice as normal, but what I found um, was it was quite gaping on me. Um, so I ended up adding a bit of elastic just to create some ruching on the top. This isn't my favourite version because I also feel like the bodice was too short on me. Um, so what I did to end up with this finished dress, which I'm much happier with, was I had a bit of a play around. So I compared the bodice pattern pieces for the simplicity pattern with the sky pattern pieces, just the bodice pattern pieces. Um, and I ended up straightening off the bodice pattern piece for the sky dress because it is a slightly square neckline but it is ever so slightly curved so I straightened it off and I got rid of the straps because I knew that I wanted to attach the straps as a separate pattern piece so that I still got that tie detail on the back so that was the first adjustment that I made to the sky pattern piece and the reason I went with this bodice piece was because I knew that it fitted me really well across the bust area and then I used the back bodice piece for the sky dress and compared it to the simplicity bodice piece um, and again I straightened it off and I got rid of the strap pattern piece on the back bodice. And then because I knew with the simplicity dress, what you have to do is you fold the back bodice piece in on itself to create that elastic casing, is I lengthened the size of the pattern piece for the sky dress. So I ended up with quite a deep pattern piece because I also wanted to make sure that that pattern piece on the back covered my bra strap. And then I ended up adding three channels in for elastic on the back bodice piece. Um, and then I also ended up amending on the simplicity pattern. You've only got one belt loop and that means that the straps come in on the back and then you tie it in the middle. That would have meant that I couldn't wear a bra. So I ended up putting two belt loops on the back pattern piece so that I could thread the straps down covering my bra first and then tying them in the middle to create a bow. When I stand up, all of that will make sense. So I used the sky bodice piece, comparing it with the simplicity to create my own bodice piece. Um, to make an adult version of this dress and then to get the skirt length correct and the ruffle length correct I used the Lyra shirt dress skirt pattern because I know that I like the length of that pattern on myself. What I ended up doing with the front bodice piece on this one you'll see that it's quite short so when I wore it it just about stopped under my bust it was too empire line for my liking so I ended up adding a couple of inches onto the bodice piece as well so I basically drafted my own front bodice piece and back bodice piece but using the sky pattern pieces because I knew that they fitted me across the bust and across the back and then I just used the um, Lyra skirt pattern pieces because I knew that they fitted and then I used the pattern piece from the simplicity for the straps 
and then they cover my bra at the front the bra that i'm wearing has actually got some lace detail so it means it's not like a, a regular bra and then it covers my bra on the back it doesn't normally cover my bra on the back there and there and then i've ended up with a bodice like this at the front and then what the back looks like is I've got this elastic on the back which creates gathering and it makes it fit me really nicely on the back. And then I've got the straps that come down onto some felt loops and then they fasten into this lovely bow, which was the detail that I really loved from my girl's dress. And then if I stand up, you can see that the skirt is just a really lovely maxi length skirt. Um, and then I've got that lovely ruffle on the bottom as well. And it stops just above my ankle which is the perfect length really this fabric is perfect for this pattern this is a viscose twill that i got from rainbow fabrics and i just i'm so thrilled with the finished garment i'm really pleased that i managed to figure out how to hack that pattern to make a version for myself and i can wear the same dress that my girls are wearing but with, just with a few tweaks to make sure that it's really comfortable on myself um, this is one of my favourite things that I made this month, I think, just because of the um, time and effort that I spent on making sure that I got the fit correctly. I'll put images in of me wearing this dress, but also of me wearing my toile, because you'll see that the toile doesn't fit as well. Um, although I like the combination of these two fabrics, the fit just isn't right. You can see on the top, it just doesn't fit me correctly. And I'm really pleased that I made that adjustment to make sure that the bodice sits much further under my bust and it's much more comfortable. So I'm really, really pleased with this dress too. So that is a roundup of all of the things that I got sewn up in the month of July. I hope you enjoyed hearing about all the different things that I have sewn. Um, like I said at the start of the video, lots of tried and tested patterns. So I didn't really push myself to try any new patterns apart from the simplicity pattern. And I guess the pattern hacking um, that went into making this dress. But I did this dress when I'd finished school. So I had a bit more headspace to sort of play around with pattern pieces and really get the fit correct. Um, let me know what project you're working on at the moment. I've got a few things that I'm busy sewing at the moment to get ready for my holiday. Um, and just to say, I will be off my YouTube channel for a couple of weeks. I'm just taking a break and then I'll be back with my Sunday sewing catch up as my next vlog. So I will be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.